Hey, what's up everybody? Molt Mage here, and this is my Glory of the Dragonflight Hero Guide. This guide will be a little bit different from my mount guides, as I will be speaking openly and freely and non-scripted. Wanted to show you guys that I'm not an NPC, and honestly it's much easier to give tips and advice for an achievement guide without having it be scripted. But don't worry, I'll still be clear and concise and get straight to the point with the video. Alright, let's get started. The first achievement here is See Me After Class. It requires you to defeat Vexmas without any players absorbing any arcane orbs. So what we decided to do is bring the boss in the back corner over here, and then we decided to drag the boss around the room clockwise. The orbs are pretty slow moving. Just make sure to watch out for the frontal cone ability of the boss as it gives you like a knockback. But other than that, just do the fight like normal, and you should be able to get this achievement with ease. The next achievement here is Duck Duck Spruce. You just need to defeat the overgrown ancient while all party members have a well-fed duckling on their head. So just go to the back pool here, make sure to click on a duck. You'll have a debuff that'll slow you down by like 65%. And then you just defeat the boss like normal. It's really that simple. The next achievement here is squad goals. It requires you to defeat Craw after simultaneously activating both goals. Uh, so what we did here is for the first orb phase, we got both goals to two out of three. Then we DPS the boss in the meantime, I'll wait for the next orb phase. And then the next orb phase, we had two throwers that we assigned and we had a countdown and coordinated when to throw the third and final orb during that phase. After we did that, you just need to kill the boss like normal and you'll get the achievement. The next achievement here is, are you my brood mother? What you'll need to do is when you first enter the Ruby life pools and the first room with the four pillars, the back right pillar will have the egg hidden behind the bushes. I would recommend having your tank pick this up because this egg will need to get hit by a mechanic from each boss within the ruby life pools. So the first mechanic that this egg will need to get hit by is the hail bomb mechanic on the first boss. Then on the second boss, that egg will need to get hit by the ritual blaze bind, which is created when the ad is being summoned. You'll see like an orange circle thing on the ground when the ad is being summoned. Make sure your tank stands in that. And then the final boss, the egg needs to get hit by the Roaring Fire Breath cast by the dragon. When this egg gets hit by the Fire Breath, this egg will drop on the ground and will continue to take damage. Make sure your healer focuses on this egg and doesn't let the egg die. Because if the egg dies, you fail the achievement. So it's imperative that your healer focuses on keeping this egg up while keeping the group up as well. Once you defeat the boss, you'll complete the achievement. The next achievement here is Dragon Kill Points. It requires you to defeat Meldrussa after defeating 40 of her chambers and fused whelps. So what we did here is initially start off the fight by spawning 10 whelps. And you can manually spawn the rest of the whelps because every set of eggs spawns about 10 whelps. So we just focused on killing the whelps first and then we just killed the boss. After you kill 40 of the whelps and you kill the boss, you'll get the achievement. The next achievement is to seem do fire damage. You'll need to defeat Coquilla Blazehoof after heating up four life pools with Molten Boulder. So what we did here is had two DPS that focused on adds and help with killing the boss. And then the rest of us stood near the pool. So we kind of separated the group so we weren't all cluttered. Um, make sure when there's the Molten Boulder mechanic being cast by the boss to stand directly in the middle of the pool. You know Blizzard, you know it's, it's a bit finicky. You'll know you'll hit it right when the steam rises from the pool. So make sure to do that with every pool around the room. There'll be a total of four of them. After you get all four pools steamed and heated up, you'll be good to go to kill the boss and you'll get the achievement. So the next achievement here is Growl Bossify. It requires you to defeat Hatclaw's Warbrand after freeing Chief Southpaw, equipping her with the spear and shield and making sure she survives. So what we first did was identify where the spear and shield were at. So we marked it in the video here with uh, blue and purple markers. And then to start the fight, we went to Chief Southpaw's cage, let her go. So she'll be feared until you give her the spear and shield. And what we did was assign two DPS, one to the spear and one to the shield, and have, it give, have them give it to her immediately. After she's given the spear and shield, she'll help you defeat the boss. Uh, be careful because she does take damage from the boss, and watch out for any AoE abilities from the boss as this can kill her. Uh, healers, Chief Southpaw can be targeted and you can heal her, so you can help keep her up. Other than that, you just need to defeat the boss fight like normal, and then you'll get the achievement. The next achievement is All Bark, All Bite. It requires you to defeat Tree Mount after every player has been consumed at least once. 
So we decided to get consumed twice because the achievement can be buggy. We just wanted to make sure we met the requirements. Our strategy was we all got consumed at the same time. Healers, I recommend saving cooldowns for this as it is healing intensive. And make sure that none of you do any damage to the boss as this will cause his shield to break and will cause the achievement to fail. Once you all leave the consume, be careful because there's a lot of swirlies on the ground. So make sure to immediately move from the boss as quick as possible so you all can survive. After you all are consumed, you can defeat the boss as normal and you'll get the achievement. So the next achievement here is so you can kill this in a way that matters. It requires you to defeat Rathai after finding and planting three resilient mushrooms and then destroying them with DK Strike. So you'll see in the video here, I put up a picture to show where the mushrooms are marked. So you can clearly see where they're at. We decided to have three separate players each grab their own mushroom. And then we decided to bring the mushroom down to the red X in the boss area. You'll notice there's an extra action bar. That's how you can plant the mushroom. Once you plant the mushroom, have the tank bring over the boss so the boss can DK strike the mushroom. You'll notice after you DK strike the mushroom, every player will get a 20 second debuff. So I recommend not doing all three mushrooms at the same time and doing each mushroom individually after the debuff drops off. After you kill all three mushrooms with the DK strike, you'll be able to kill the boss and get the achievement. The next achievement here is what are the chances? It requires you to defeat Raging Tempest after striking a single player with five lightning strikes simultaneously and defeating a storm elemental. So what we did here is we had everyone kind of stack around the tank. We waited for the tank to get struck by the lightning strike at least five times. Once the tank got struck five times, there was an ad that spawned. You just need to defeat the ad and then you can kill the boss and then you're done with the achievement. The next achievement here is the weapons of the Morukai. It requires you to defeat Tira and Maruk while holding the Spear of Toli, War Axe of Burke, and the Bow of Sartag. So around the boss arena, there'll be three different caves. You'll have to have three separate players each grab a weapon. The player that grabs a spear causes the player to take 20% increased damage. The player that grabs the War Axe reduces the player's movement speed by 30%. The player that grabs the bow reduces incoming healing affected by 20%. Once all the weapons are acquired, you need to defeat the boss as normal with these debuffs on each player, and then you'll be done. The next achievement here is to Anahu Incubation. I know I probably said that wrong, but you can make fun of me in the comments, it's totally fine. It requires you to deliver eight warm Anahu eggs to Anahu Keeper Tarek in a single visit. So you can either do this achievement by yourself, or you can do it in a group. Around the entire dungeon, there'll be eight nests. On the screen here, I posted all the locations of every single nest. When you click on these nests, it will give you an egg. And you need to take this egg and drop it in the basket here to give it back to the keeper. Once you do this with all eight eggs, you'll be completed with the achievement. The next achievement here is No Could D Goes Unnoticed. It requires you to defeat Bacalar Khan after healing Onarhin to full health. So mainly the healer will just need to heal the large bird that's behind the boss. Um, you'll need to heal the bird two times, once before the intermission and once after. Any DPS with healing abilities can also help with this as well. After you heal the bird to full health the second time, you can defeat the boss as normal and you'll get the achievement. The next achievement here is it's a Trog East Trog World. You need to defeat Bromach while 10 or more Stonewalled Trogs are still alive. This achievement you'll need to be patient for, as throughout the fight the boss will summon waves of adds. After approximately four waves, you should have 10 or more uh, adds. Make sure none of the DPS use the AOE abilities, because this will accidentally cleave down the adds. However, the DPS should destroy the totems as they spawn. Just kill the boss with enough adds up, and you'll get the achievement. The next achievement here is Know You're Stunning. It requires you to defeat Sentinel Talendras after simultaneously stunning both Sentinel Talendras and all party members. So this is another achievement where it would be great to be in voice. Throughout the fight, the boss will spawn orbs, and walking through an orb will cause a player and or monsters to get stunned. However, the boss is immune to CC, so to break him from being immune to CC, you have to get him through two orbs. Quickly get him through two orbs, and then wait till there's at least six orbs on the ground, and then coordinate with your team and get all six of you stunned at the same time. As long as you do it within a good couple second time frame, you'll be good to go. And then after that, you can kill the boss and you'll complete the achievement. 
So the next achievement here is like sands through the hourglass. It requires you to defeat Chrono Lord Delios after catching 20 Eternity Orbs. So if you want, you can make this a little easier and tank the boss near the wall because there will be an inevitable knockback. But to catch these Eternity Orbs, they come down really slowly and you seem to stand on the swirly underneath them. Make sure to catch 20 of them. You don't have to do the wall strategy if you don't want. It will just take a little bit longer to do the knockback because you won't be able to catch as many as quick. But I would just recommend if you want to do it faster, you can tank it near the wall and then just catch 20 orbs and then you can kill the boss like normal and you'll get the achievement. The next achievement is Knowledge is Preserved. It requires you to defeat Chargoth, Bane of Scales, while burning less than 15 books. So what we did here is just brought the boss over to the stairs. You got to make sure the boss doesn't finish his fiery focus cast or else all the books will be burned. So this is pretty much essentially a DPS check. I'd recommend bringing a class that has Lust and just burning down the boss as fast as possible. In the event that your DPS isn't strong enough, you can use the Grounding Chairs mechanic to trip up Chargoth and stun him, thus preventing him from finishing his Fiery Focus cast. But if your DPS is really strong and you get him down quickly, you'll complete this achievement easily. The next achievement is Ready for Rating 7. It requires you to defeat Forge Master Gorak without being struck by Forge Storm, Forge Fire, Blazing Eruptions, another player's, Blazing Aegis, or the final slam of Heated Swings. So this is a personal achievement. You just basically need to dodge every avoidable mechanic for the entire duration of the fight. Once you kill him, you'll complete the achievement, barring that you avoided all the avoidable mechanics. Next is Liquid Hot Magma, which requires you to defeat Magmatus after it has been mutated with Draconic Tankatures. So when you enter the boss's room, you'll notice there'll be a table over to the right. Every player needs to grab onto a Tinkature and then use the extra action button and throw it onto the boss before the encounter starts. Make sure the boss has five stacks of Magma Tentacle buff, and then you'll be able to defeat the boss like normal. Essentially what this does is just buff all his mechanics that you need to dodge. And once you kill him, you'll get the achievement. The next achievement here is you must be made of hide. It requires you to defeat the last boss Umber Skull without being hit by a Polymorph Trap or triggering a Shriek. So when you're going through the dungeon, you'll notice the whelps all throughout the dungeon. Just make sure to avoid them at all costs. Um, in the event that one of you steps in the circle and the whelps are starting to cast Shriek, you can stun or CC them and then kill them to prevent them from casting Shriek. And then after the first boss, you'll have to look out for runes on the ground. If anyone is in them, they'll be Polymorphed. So just make sure to avoid them and then go through the entire dungeon without casting Streak or getting hit by a Polymore Trap, and you'll be good to go. The next achievement here is I See What You Did There. It requires you to defeat Talash Greywing after using Icy Devastator 12 times on an Ice Crystal to create a very icy crystal. Before you engage the boss, make note of where the blue floating crystal is. Once located, you can place a marker if it makes it easier to spot but you'll want every player to bait an Icy Devastator on top of it. Each channel of Icy Devastator has four ticks, and this is why you want to be on top of the crystal before the cast goes out. If you manage to get all four ticks, you can finish this achievement in three casts of Icy Devastator. It is important to not cover the ground in ice with the Frost Bomb mechanic, so it is recommended that players bait this away from the crystal. However, the damage is not too terrible depending on your group's gear level. The most important thing to remember is getting all 4 ticks of Icy Devastator on the crystal. Once the crystal has 12 stacks, you can defeat the boss as normal and you'll get the achievement. The next achievement here is the Crack Crystal. It requires you to defeat Umber Skull after smashing Shimmering Geodes with Dragon Strike and destroying 9 Geode Chunks. So you'll notice around the boss's room there's very bright purple Geodes. The tank will just need to position the boss in front of these, allowing them to be struck with Dragon Strike. And once they're struck, they'll be broken up into three different chunks. DPS these down and then rinse and repeat two times. And then once you eliminate all nine geodes, you'll be able to defeat the boss as normal and get the achievement. The next achievement here is Toxicity Strike Team. It requires you to defeat the Toxic Swag Mother after purging the water intakes. So after you kill the first boss, there will be a pathway towards the left. You'll just need to eliminate a few mobs and then go to the intake reservoir room. And then once inside at the bottom of the water, you'll notice there'll be a machine with the button. Press the button and this will spawn the toxic swag mother and you'll defeat her and then you'll be good for the achievement. For the sake of clarity, I'm going to show you the exact route of how to get to this button and summon the swag mother so you aren't spending a bunch of time like we did trying to find this button.
The next achievement is Hungry Hungry Hornswog. It requires you to defeat the gulping goliath after forcing it to become hangry and to devour 10 curious smoglets. So for this achievement here, I recommend bringing classes that have long lasting AoE CC abilities. Throughout the encounter the boss will cast Overpowering Croak, causing cavens that spawn swoglets. You'll need at least two waves of these. You should have your group stack up with the exception of the tank. And as the swoglets come in, make sure to CC them with the long lasting AoE CC abilities. Make sure during the first gulp that the boss doesn't consume any of the first set of swaglets. Once you gather two sets of swaglets and they're CC'd, have the boss get hangry and then have the tank bring over the boss to those swaglets. Allow him to gulp down all 10 of the swaglets. Once he gulps them all down, you can defeat the boss as normal and get the achievement. The final achievement of this guide is Go With The Flow. It requires you to defeat the primal tsunami after slaying three flow control units. So you just start off this boss fight like normal, and then when you get to the intermission phase and everyone gets knocked back into their different corridors, instead of running straight back to the boss like you normally would, turn around and at the end of the corridor there will be an ad. Make sure you defeat the ad and everyone in the group does it in their corridor. After you do this, run back towards the boss. The boss will be slightly more empowered since it took you longer to get back to the boss. However, it won't be much of an issue. Then you just need to defeat the boss as normal, and you'll be completed with the glory of the Dragonflight Hero achievement and have your mount. And that is it for this video. Uh, I wanted to take a little risk here and do my achievement guide in a different way than I do my mount guides. I plan to keep my mount guides the same, but I think with the achievement guides, the achievements would be more nuanced and it'd be a better way to give the tips and tricks and just explain each achievement individually. If you guys found any value in this video, I really appreciate it giving you a thumbs up, commented, shared it as well. This will all help the channel grow and give the video more views. I also like to stream on Twitch. I'll stream a lot of WoW content. I'll do small indie games. I'll do horror games. And I'll do a variety of other content as well. My community and I love to laugh and have a great time together. And we love you all to join us. My Twitch is on the screen above. And again, I just want to give out my gratitude and appreciation for all the support you've all given me. To make it this far and to get this many subscribers after a couple years is pretty awesome. And I hope to continue to grow and help more people. And I'm just really grateful and thankful for all the support and growth that y'all have given me. And I hope you all really enjoyed this video.